Radian, hi. Good afternoon. Uh, How are you? Thanks for coming along. Can you just remind us, Radian, uh, which masters did you do in AIT? I did the MA in Child and Youth Care. I did the part-time masters. Okay, and that was a number of years ago. That was four years ago. Graduated four years ago. Excellent. Can you just tell us then what what, what difference did the masters make to you? Well, I think um, the masters made a significant difference to my career, um, both in terms of my practice and actually my career development. I suppose when I was looking to do the Masters, I was really interested in upskilling myself in terms of my career development. But also I felt that my primary degree had prepared me, but it didn't quite give me the nuances I need to further myself in terms of my career. But also I was involved in a lot of practice without a theoretical basis. So I knew what I was doing, but I wasn't quite sure why I was doing it. So in terms of that, I wasn't really able to sell the work that I was doing to my managers or on a wider scale. So I was looking for a master's that was academic in focus, but had a very massive impact on practice. So I was looking for the practice and, and the academia in one master's. And I did a lot of research in relation to master's that were out there. I was prepared to travel. Um, uh, but most of the master's that I found really had that focus on a theoretical framework which is fine but I wanted that theoretical framework to influence how I worked with young people children and families so when I came across the masters in AIT the modules really appealed to me modules like child and family law children's rights and um, family systems in terms of resilience and systems theory and all of those things were directly applicable to my work um, so that was one of the reasons why I chose the Masters. I was also at that point in my career where I was interested in moving forward in terms of like, up the line per se in terms of management because mm. I'd realised that while I was really interested in practice, practice could only get better if the people who were managing the project influenced how that practice was. Mm. So you could only do that if you were going towards senior management. And I knew that I wouldn't get there based on my, I had a primary degree and I had a postgraduate, but I didn't have a master's. I had lots of practice, but I think the MA really gave me that kind of, it propelled me into a different area of positions I could apply for. So I suppose for me, when I graduated from the MA, and I really enjoyed the MA, um, you really as well because not only was it academically stimulating, intellectually stimulating, my practice changed, the way I was and my role changed because of what I was learning. Um, it wasn't so much that I didn't know these things, but it was about matching my practice with the theoretical models that I was getting in the classroom. So the classroom and the field of work had a direct correlation for me, really. Um, but when I finished the MA, I kind of said to myself, I really need to start applying for different kinds of positions. So I wouldn't have done that if I hadn't have successfully graduated, if I didn't have that master's. It wasn't as if anything had changed in terms of my practice. It was still as consistent as it was. But it really gave me the confidence and, I think, the credibility to apply for different positions. Um, so I did. I, I applied for a number of positions that I thought... My, my thinking was to start challenging myself in terms of interviews and I've done this master's, I've really seen how that can help me and how it can make me a better practitioner. So I'll apply for a number of positions, get that experience. I didn't think that I would have been as successful as I was. But, um, but I suppose what I would say to anybody was that I had a certain level of confidence before I did the master's, but nothing in comparison to what I was after I had done the master's. I would never have applied for the jobs that I did if it wasn't for having that MA under my belt. And people might say, well, you know, a degree or an MA is a piece of paper. I don't really agree with that theory because I think that the master's really equips you to challenge your own self um, and to give you that theoretical basis that you can actually defend your practice based on models of practice that have been uh, tried and tested in other kind of, you know, both internationally and nationally. Excellent. I mean, lots of students consider masters and one of the big kind of decision points is, is it worth the investment financially? Mm -hmm. You're talking on a part-time basis, maybe mm -hmm. looking at 6,000 over two years on a full-time basis, perhaps looking at four and a half to 5,000 over one year. When it comes down to mm -hmm. it, did it make a difference to, to the sort of salary you were able to attract? 
Oh, absolutely. And what I would say to students is that you are, you're thinking of 6,000 or, or whatever. I think mine was a bit more expensive, but anyway. Um, I, you're thinking of it as one lump sum. I mean, I didn't have that kind of money hanging around. I had to borrow it the same way as everyone else did. But I looked at it as an event, an investment, and it really paid off for me in terms of my earning potential grew enormously in the last three years. Um, like in terms of my salary has gone up by you know significantly because of the kinds of jobs that I'm able to now apply for the kinds of positions that I'm in so while it was expensive it has paid off like huge dividends not only in terms of personal satisfaction in relation to the kind of work I'm able to do but in terms of the, the salaries I'm able to command now because of the roles that I'm in and like what I would always say to people is it's difficult to get into that bracket but once you are there you'll always be able to like you know be in that pool of mm. of that kind of salary bracket so I would think of it less as a sum that you have to manage now and think of it like in terms of where you're going to be in five years time because it's only four years since I did my master's and in that four years I've moved positions twice and it has always been going up in terms of salary. Excellent. Another thing reading it is that students will often look at a number of masters and think well listen, I don't know if I want to specialise in children and youth uh, perhaps it's too mm. narrow. I mean, on reflection, uh, you know, did mm. an MA in child and youth care actually fit the kind of practice mm. that you have and had at the time? Well, I think the the MA in child and youth care is actually it was it was the more broad MA that I looked at. It didn't define you to one particular area. Most of the masters out there are are very specific in terms of you can do your masters in social work or you can do your masters in research. This really gave you a, an overall basis. If you are interested in the community and voluntary sector or in social care of any area this is the master's for you because it really kind of, it, it breaks it down into all of the skills that you would need to be an on the ground practitioner. So I don't think, I would think of it, it says child and youth care, but we looked at family support. We looked at community development. There was, um, in, there was one to one engagement. It was lots of different areas that the master's covered. So I think it was, it was very broad. And that's what appealed to me because it looked at the whole trajectory of working in this area from the legal aspect to the rights based aspect to the actual practice to the individual systems theory. I mean, so it really covered a whole a tranche of everything that you would need to know if you are engaging with a, a child, family, community, any area in the kind of community voluntary sector or the social care se sector in, in general. Great, excellent. And, and you, you've, you've touched on the answer to that. but. Looking back again in terms of the, the elements of the mm. Masters, and you've mentioned a, a number of those, children's rights, for example, mm. models of care, etc. Mm. Um, were there any particular uh, modules that you did that you, you think particularly informed your practice? Mm. Um, I think for me, what particularly informed my practice was child and family law. Um, that was a that was one that really helped me at the time I was working in the whole area of youth justice. But I was working in youth justice from a very disempowered perspective because I really wasn't clear about the legal aspect to it and in terms of the whole legal framework in relation to how where the child is placed in terms of our constitution and in terms of our, our legal framework and system. So that gave me a really good grounding in relation to not only the legislation but our thinking in terms of the law in relation to children and families and I've used that module so many times because the law is the thing in Ireland in relation to children and families and um, once if you can actually look at um, if you can quote cases in relation to child and family then you're on a winner and if you are very empowered in relation to knowledge about what our legislation in terms of the Child Care Act the Children's Act and how those things came about then you really are in a good position to advocate for your individual child or family. Excellent and finally your dissertation, what subject did you, did you choose or topic did you choose to do it in? Well, I chose my topic on youth participation. And I think it's interesting now because it was coming from a really rights-based model. And the role I'm currently involved in now is that I'm an advocacy, I'm the advocacy director for EPIC. So it's all about mm -hmm. amplifying the voice of the child, participation as a right rather than uh, somebody bestowing that to you. So I... You know, the Article 12 of the UNCRC kind of defines my life in terms of from the MA to now. So it was about um, how young people participate. And I suppose I looked at how they really participated in terms of 
the kind of higher levels of participation in terms of conflict and negotiation and how many decisions a young person makes in conjunction with an adult. Uh, and I chose that because it really interested me because I had, um, you know, a lot of experience of working with young people in terms of youth projects. And it concerned me that we were in the business of service provision rather than working with young people as active citizens in their own right. So um, it, it was directly pick, applicable to my practice, but it also afforded me the opportunity to you know, find out some really interesting things in relation to how we as youth workers who are supposed to be the conduit for young people actually empowering themselves, how we actually disempower them through our own lack of knowledge or through our own lack of um, willingness to be focused on children's rights. So that's what I did my um, dissertation on. Great, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.